The world is divided between light and dark, good and evil. Only the light defends from the dark hordes upon our borders and protects from the evil which lies within the hearts of mortals and will corrupt our souls. It was not always this way. Many eons ago the world was joined as one alliance of good. There was no evil. The evil crept in. The world as you see it today was a very different place. All the lands were free and flourished. It was a paradise, but cracks started to appear. In the land of Dresdoria, far to the east, across the rolling grass plains of Houdin, along the great winding river of Andrian, through the murky forests it sat, a realm of fear. This barren land, surrounded by sinister mountains, which legend has it were built as a wall by the now extinct race of giants, erected as a prison to trap the ancient demons of unspeakable evil which once ruled the most of the known world. Enraged, the demons attempted to escape. They dug and dug through the jagged hard rock of the saw crowned mountains. The giants knew of their plan, and though not agreeing with condemning these vile creatures to death, no matter how evil they felt they were, they pulled the mountain down, sealing the demons and their monstrous nature deep inside. Dead were their bodies, but not their evil. The river which flows out of the mountains in Dresdoria flowed with fire and sulphur, poisoned by their hate and malice. The once rich forest withered and died, all creatures inside of this land were touched by the power of the ancient evil, twisting them into hideous variations of what we call life. For many thousands of years these lands remained lost in time, until a young man crossed the river and the mountain range in search of riches. A prospector, desperate to find green silver, he trod a path, a path which had been forgotten and was full of hardships, blistering the cold winds snowstorms tearing through the narrow ravines of sharp black rock. The elements battered him, striking down upon him at all times with all their fury. Close to the end he laid on the icy rock ground, his mind broken and freezing to death. With his last breath he implored anyone to help. He would do anything to live. He even offered his immortal soul. This whisper carried on the back of the wind it whistled through the rocks deep into the dark heart of the mountain where it was heard. As he faded out of this world into the next, he was surrounded by the darkness, only a small ball of light before him. As he felt himself approach the light, the brightness faded and was snatched by the darkness, as if the sun had been grabbed out of the sky by a black clawed fist. The light was gone, there was nothing, only silence. Seconds seemed hours. From out of the empty black void came a voice, a vicious forked tongue lashing deep into the heart of the man, scaring his very soul, turning his spirit dark, dark as the darkest bowels of the earth. Light returned. He awoke, alive, safe. He had made it over the treacherous mountain, with no memory of how he had arrived at this point and no memory of the evil which had ensnared his soul. Years passed and word spread across the three kingdoms of people rushing towards Dresdoria. It was a hostile land where night overshadows day and food does not grow. However, people flocked there in ever increasing numbers. For you see, the past hundred years the young man had been mining green silver out of the mountain in vast amounts, which could never have been imagined. The young man, though curiously, was still young, and had grown strong, and was now the king of this rotting kingdom, his heart corrupted fully by the demon's evil power. As people rushed to the land, following their greed, the demon fed, fed off the, their greed, and fed off their soul, restoring many of his original powers. As more people flocked to line their pockets, as did the demon line his with the fresh souls. As the miners dug deeper, the green silver became more abundant, spurring them on. For centuries they dug, creating immense mines which became more like underground cities. 
an intricate network of rails and carts transported the silver up to the surface. Large funnels rose up through the tons of rocks. Great chimneys burst from the mountaintops, pumping thick black smoke into the chilled air. The pollution caused green, hazy smog to cover the mountain range. Everyone that had ventured to the realm dug, compelled by greed and the power of the demon. These men changed. Physically, they suffered agonizing transformations over generations. This pain was horrific, but their unquenchable thirst for more riches forced them to overlook it, and they slipped further into the dark, until they were no longer men, but trolls and orcs, pale grey skin, sharp teeth and razor claws that can cut through rock. They became such underground, damned creatures, sunlight caused them to combust in a violent manner, doomed to a life underground and isolated from humanity. They dug, that's all they knew. The young man, still young, was now the king of the wealthiest realm of the known world. However, shrouded in eternal night, his kingdom was seen as a rabble of thieves and creatures unworthy of life itself. This worldview played upon the mind. How dare they? He was the king of a powerful military nation. His kingdom had wealth beyond anyone's dreams. He held the kings of the other realms and their people in contempt. His black heart only concerned with wealth, power and destruction. Many a time had the dwarf lords led armies in an attempt to seize the mine. The landscape of dead trees was littered with the skeletons of entire armies, the rotting remains of what the mines cavern strewn with corpses of failed dwarf attack. As the mine grew and deepened in tormenting voice echoed within the mind of the king. At night his dreams were a terrifying montage of fire and death. He saw war, destruction, plague, famine, images that should destroy a man and torment him to the end of his days. The dreams polluted his already sick mind further, and with each dream of war and death he saw clearer his ambitions. The trolls' endless digging finally took them to the cabin, the tomb of the demons. A sniffling, twisted troll's filth encrusted hand snatched at the rocks, his long pointy fingers desperate for more riches. He suddenly came across something, not green, but orange, glowing softly from under the rock as if the rock was on fire. Hurriedly he clawed at the rock, the fire in his eyes growing bigger and brighter until he unearthed an amber firestone. As he did the flames swirling in his jet black eyes grew more mesmerising. Other trolls crept up behind him as he gazed into the stone, their hunched bodies hobbling. What's that you found? croaked one of the two stalking trolls. That's not green silver, stuttered the other contorted creature. The fire engulfed the other two's eyes, muttering an ancient language that gripped their minds. The second troll growled with a harsh, rasp voice, Give me that, Risha! Give it to me! They stood sheepishly behind the troll who had discovered the stone. Risha looked into the stone, the smooth yet jagged surface giving a warped reflection of the other two trolls. Give it to me now! The trolls moved closer, picks in hand. No! I found it! It's mine! Risha, staring at the reflections, his eyes narrowed, his teeth bore in a snarl. It's mine! cried Risha, full of hate in his voice. You know we've got to give everything to the king! He rewards us! It's his! Risha reaches slowly for his pickaxe. The king can't have it! It's mine! I found it! Give it to me! One of the trolls cries. Risha grabs the wooden handle of his small axe and swings it around, lashing out at the other two. The axe twirled wildly around his head, hissing. The other trolls troll drunk jumped and ducked as they attempted to avoid the axe. In the chaos a lethal blow to the head caught one of the trolls. His skull smashed clean open. His body slumped to its knees and hit the cold rock floor. 
I'll kill you, it's mine! Risha squawks. Risha swung the axe at the other troll, who threw himself. They fought hand to hand, clawing at each other's eyes. They hissed as they rolled around, 